Hi, I'm Ryan for you. I'm the spiritual cowboy girl. And today I'm going to have like a little, just a small discussion because it's important to document so I can come back to it later as well and do a longer video when I have more direct information on it. But we're talking about how certain foods can cause, certain foods and eating habits can cause mental anguish, anxiety, mental health issues and um, issues with spiritual growth and um you know, awake spiritual awakening. So I'll say growing up, like from the young age of like 12, when I started to get into spirituality, I don't really have an exact age because I started having premonitions of, you know, I'll talk about this on, on another video, but I started having prem premonitions of people passing and when they would pass before I got into spirituality. And that was like when I was a kid, but when I really like got into spirituality, I was around 12, 13. And, uh, and when I first started learning about it, I was really young. So also your youth has definitely d does have something to do with like your abilities when it comes to bouncing back after ingesting something like a certain food or something like that. Of course, your youth has something to do with it. Like, say, for instance, someone who eats a donut, like, if they're younger, they'll probably just get, like, a quick little sugar rush, and then they'll be, like, still able to keep going. But my age or someone a little bit older or really older, eating a donut is like, like eating 12 pounds of brick. Like, it completely slows you down. So... When I was growing up, when I started to get into spirituality between 12, 13, and 14, my eating habits were normal, actually. They were just like, I ate breakfast, I ate lunch, I ate dinner every day. Or if I didn't eat breakfast, I would eat lunch and dinner. If I didn't eat, most of the time if I didn't eat lunch, I will just eat breakfast and dinner. That was it. And I'd eat it like a healthy snack between the day, but I was like young. So that was before like I solved my problems with eating. So... When I got into spirituality, there it was just me learning, but my body was open because I wasn't ingesting so much. And also, um, I wasn't ingesting, digesting, or they're the same. I mean, digest is uh, to digest, though, and ingest is to put in. But I, w I, I think I, that's ingest is the word I would know, but I hope so. I hope so. But... When I started um, ingesting foods, like when I started ingesting spirituality, I was, you know, eating foods that were simple, that were like, you know, I would eat a snack, I would eat a candy like once a day, but it wasn't like on in continuously eating junk food. It wasn't like that. So, so I would, uh, I'm sorry, I just woke up actually like 20 minutes ago. So... I was about, like I said, 12, 13, 14. I was about 15, no, 16 to 17 when I started having very, no, 17 to 18 when I started having very bad eating patterns. And that was around the time that I experienced the passing in my family. That was really, really, it was a person that was very, very, very important to my existence. And I did not know how there were there was nobody there for me there was like people who like consulted me like consoled me or like had me around I'd say I wasn't even consoled they had me around but nobody really was there for me within that experience everybody had their feelings about the person and so that kept me from being able to experience my family completely and that messed me up because I did not know how to channel that energy of, oh my God, this person's dead. I'll never see them again. And I had a very important job. Like I was, um, I had some kind of little shop back then. So like when I experienced that, I was still learning spirituality. Yes, but I wasn't as open. But when I experienced that death, I actually like, I completely stopped. I stopped shipping stuff. I stopped working. Everybody thought that I was just like dead or like I was tripping or like I was stealing, <laughs> but I actually was just un unable to grieve death. I would sit in my room for hours on end and I just look at the wall 
and you know nobody helped me and so I turned to food and food made me grow more depressed I turned to food I turned to food like like fattening foods like like um sugary foods like you know junk a lot of junk like and I had the funds to do it like I would sit in my room all day and then I would go to the store go to the corner store get some cakes get some ice cream get some I I, I ate like bluebell ice cream every single day I get some ice cream I get some cake and I would just come back into my home and my like my room and I'd sit in my room and eat and I'm tripping because when I started that bad eating habit, I mean, I'm not going to call no names, but people were really going off on me like how bad I was eating, but nobody took care of me. Nobody like cared for me, cared for me. <laughs> you said you cared for me. Nobody did that when I experienced that death, but then people complained about my eating habits. That's f Anyways, I... Stop learning about spirituality around 17, 18. I stopped investing into learning about spirituality because my eating habits were so bad. They were affecting my mental health even worse. Like I already had depression. I was using the food to help my depression. But eating sugary, fattening things all the time, it made me literally like, what's that called? Like hysteria or something like that. Like it made me so distant. Or like, ment it just mentally ambushed me. It made me mentally unclear. I was so incapable of finding, like, time to sit down. Because, like, my sugar levels were all the way off. You know, I don't know if that's correct. But, I like, I'm now I'm getting into it. Like, I was taking in too much sugar. And also, like, in general, when I wasn't eating sugar, like, the big, big, hefty meals. Like, I was a, a dang lumberjack. Like, I started to eat more and more. And then I started to, like, I noticed the food, the food that I was taking in made me upset all the time. It made me angry. It was, like, just a little cake. And I, all of a sudden, like, I'm like, God, I, I hate this life or, or this or that. It's like spirituality, being so spiritually open from the ages of, like, 12 to the ages of 16, 15. That was, like, the best experience of my life. And then when I started eating a certain way... My mind just, I'm telling you what it is. I'm telling you just like it is. I wasn't doing nothing but eating. Nothing. I was not doing nothing. No drugs, no nothing, no nothing but eating. So I was doing a drug, LOL. But I had such a bad eating pattern and it affected my mental health and that made me push spirituality away completely. Like I could not find contentment within like learning about spirituality anymore. Like I just let it go. I completely let it go. I was tired. I was tired all the time as well because of the negative like ways I was eating. I was exhausted with life. So <sighs> this is a video to say. I actually stopped learning about spirituality around that time. I didn't start learning about spirituality again until my last three months of being 19 so that was like i started the eating habit at around 17 so that was about one and it was like early 17 it was like actually in my birthday month so that's one one year two year three year wait what or is it just two it's about it's about three so three years of a negative eating pattern Three years of known, three years of letting go of spirituality. I have not, I have just now started to fix my negative eating pattern. I actually started fixing it around like, that's not true, around like May of last year. January, February, March, April. Around April, actually. April. April of last year. I forgot it's been that long. But yeah, I started to fix my eating pattern around then, but it's like, what it did to me within my spiritual journey and my spiritual awakening it still made like made it difficult for me to completely invest because like i had pushed it off so much like i'm telling you eating poorly can affect your mind eating poorly can affect your mental health and then all of a sudden you're like grasping at at 
something that you once loved that you feel like no connection to. I'm telling you, eating certain things, they put certain ingredients into certain things that can cause hysteria. And they do that so they can make y'all crazy. By y'all, I mean us. Like, I've seen it before. I was talking to somebody and they said, they said that they um, saw something like about how people in prison, they'll eat the prison food and then all of a sudden they're like tripping. They're like fighting each other. Like, that's real. That's not just in prison. That's out here as well. Like, they'll put certain things in the foods and it will just, not, it will not only, it, like, it'll cause hysteria and it'll cause a negative mental pattern. But vegetables and fruits and, and, and stuff like that, you know, I love, I love me a little, a little piece of chicken. The vegetables and fruits and such like that and also like um herbs as well as um you know like say for instance magnesium and such like that and um i forgot what it's called there's this powder that you eat i don't know what it's called but it it, it, it starts with a g or something i forgot but it helps your bones. It helps your bones grow or something like that. But yeah, like supplements. That, man, that'll not only change your... Because look, when you start changing your eating habit, especially within like diving into spirituality, you'll be more open to the knowledge that you're being like, that's being pushed on you. You'll be more open to receiving it. I Like I just feel like, well, I know for, for a fact... When I was eating a certain way, some days when I would fast, I'm not telling y'all to just not eat. But as a spiritual person, you will get around to fasting. And if you don't, you not really, I don't know. I'll say, I say a lot of things about spirituality, how spirituality is vast and there isn't just one way to do it. But I do know that most people within spirituality, not, I'm not talking about tarot. Because tarot is like, just, if you're doing tarot, you don't really... I mean, maybe you do fast once, in, like, but it's not like mandatory from the tarot girls. But when you're learning about spirituality, like Hinduism and Buddhism and all that, like, there's gonna be a point where you fast, not to lose weight, but to become closer to God. You'll learn that in spirituality, where fasting is very important to become closer to God. So, like, I would fast, and then I would eat good, and then I wouldn't, if I was eating bad, it wasn't, like, continuously through the day, eating the worst kinds of, like, food that take 200 weeks to digest. Like, I'm not even a foodie person anymore. I'm not, well, I, nah, I'm not even, like, I'm talking about, like, I'm not even into, like, like, perfect eating patterns. Like, some days I'll eat chicken, but I'm saying, like, I'm not a professional i'm not an expert but i am saying this is true certain eating patterns can mess you up mentally and it's not just because oh it's a you know it's a cake it's because like i said what they put in them cakes to mess us up mentally and emotionally and then we wonder why we're so deeply embedded into our phones and why it's so hard for us to get up and, and, and teach and eat and like invest into jogging or invest into doing more with our lives because we're sluggish because we're eating the worst things so eating lower vibrational food that is true what that little girl said what that woman said about the lower vibrational plate but that plate that i saw that she was talking about the low vibrational plate that that, that lady that was not a low vibrational plate that was just some barbecue that is not what a low vibrational plate is. Low vibrational plate is is McDonald's or you know KFC or a bunch of sugar cakes, but some barbecue, some rice, some mashed potatoes. That's a meal. You eat that. You walk for about twenty minutes. You could walk around your room, walk around your house, walk outside for about 20 minutes, walk around the neighborhood, walk the loop, and that's over. I mean, that will stick for about a couple of weeks, I'm sure, barbecue, but I'm saying, like, that's a meal. That's That was a meal I saw on that plate. Even if it was just barbecue, that's a little different. I'm not, I'm not talking about barbecue, because that is actually, like, I will say, though, meats, meats definitely cause hysteria. I should do a part two of this. But I will say in this ending that meats cause hysteria very badly because those animals are tortured. Not the justice card coming out. Those animals are tortured and they're like abused very poorly and they're living in negative conditions and they die with broken hearts. Part two. Thank you.